If you're planning on producing a standalone movie in motion, then it's really important to make sure you're using the correct resolution and frame rate before you get started. Now, if you've just made a project without really thinking about this, you can check what you've made by looking in Project, then Inspector, and then in Properties to see what the settings are. Here I've got a preset, Broadcast HD 1080 chosen, which is a pretty standard 1920 by 1080 Full HD, and there's also Ultra HD, either a full 4K or the wider version. And you'll see that the width and height change as you choose the different values here. There's also some 360 degree presets, and you can choose an entirely custom setting just by typing in the numbers for width and height. So if I wanted a really, really wide canvas, perhaps to do, you know, a stadium animation that runs all the way around it on connected screens, then, you know, that might work. But most of the time, I'll be showing you Broadcast HD 1080. Now, the frame rate here is quite important. You've got to get this right because you cannot change this after you've created a project. Now, 29.97 is the standard frame rate for most work done in the US, Canada, Japan, and much of South America, but it's not the only standard that the world uses. So if I was going to make a new project with file new or command N, and you can have multiple projects open at once in motion, but you probably wouldn't, just one at a time is a good idea. Then I'd make sure that the frame rate is right. When I make a project, I'll pick the preset first and then make sure I'm choosing the correct frame rate, which in this case is, let's say, 25 frames a second, which is good for Australia, the UK, Europe, New Zealand, and so on. Duration, I can talk about it in frames or time code or seconds. And I'm going to choose 15 seconds here. And this is something you can change later, so don't worry about it too much. But it makes sense to pick something that's at least close to the correct duration. If you set the duration for 30 and only need 5, then it's going to be a little annoying. In terms of the type of project we're going to make, I'll be showing you a motion project and also a Final Cut Pro generator, because they're quite similar conceptually. With a motion project, you would export, when you're finished, to a rendered finished movie, which you can then treat like any other clip in a video editing program, like Final Cut Pro or something else. But a Final Cut Pro generator will only work within Final Cut Pro, will be rendered within Final Cut Pro, and will or can give you options that you can change in Final Cut Pro at the timeline level, so you or another editor can make changes later. For now, though, I'll show you a motion project and hit open to create the project itself. If you've made a standard motion project, it is, of course, important to save or save as. And when you do save, I'm just going to call mine example. You'll want to pay attention to this little menu in the center to collect the media. Now, this means that any images or video or audio that you've imported into your project will be collected next to the project and not lost. However, if you change your mind and you want to make it a generator, uh, not a composition, then you can. The generator is the only one that really makes sense here, though. The other types of projects have specific requirements. They're not quite like compositions, so a generator would make more sense. And if you do that, then the save process is a bit different. You're saving it direct to a category and optionally to a theme, and you give it a name, and then it shows up within the Final Cut Pro interface. I'm going to convert mine back to a composition then, so that I can just save it as a regular file, a regular project. But if you want to work with Final Cut Pro, then generators are a pretty good idea. And we'll return to that later in the course. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to import all kinds of things into the project.